Good morning, everyone. Trusting you're all doing well and staying safe. This morning, I want to share with us from 1 Peter chapter 1, and I'll read from verse 3 to verse 9. It reads, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Do you need encouragement? Peter's words offer joy and hope in times of trouble. And he bases his confidence on what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. We are called into a living hope of eternal life. Our hope is not only in the future. Eternal life begins when we trust Christ and join God's family. God will help us remain true to our faith through whatever difficult times we must face. The last time here is a judgment day of Christ described in Romans 14.10. No matter what trials or persecution you may face, your soul cannot be harmed if you have accepted Christ's gift of salvation. You will receive the promised rewards. You know, the Jews looked forward to an inheritance in the promised land of Canaan. Although the nation had received that right of inheritance, eventually they had defiled their faith through the influence of foreign nations. The people's sin, sins had caused the promise to become only a fading memory. Christians now look forward to another inheritance, eternal life in the eternal city of God. God has reserved the inheritance. It will never fade or decay. It will be unstained by sin. The best part of this is that you have an inheritance if you have trusted Christ as your Savior. Now, why were the Christians a target of persecution? One, they refused to worship the empire as a god, and thus they were viewed as atheists and traitors. Secondly, they refused to worship at pagan temples, so business for these money-making enterprises dropped wherever Christianity took hold. Thirdly, they didn't support the Roman ideals of self, power, and conquest. And the Romans scorned the Christian, Christian deal of self-sacrificing ideal of self-sacrificing service. And finally, they exposed and rejected the horrible immorality of pagan culture. Peter mentions trials and sufferings several times in this letter. All believers face trials when they let their light shine into the darkness. We must accept trials as part of the refining process that burns away impurities and prepares us to meet Christ. As gold is heated, impurities flow to the top and can be skimmed off. Likewise, our trials, struggles and persecutions refine and strengthen our faith making us useful to God. Instead of asking, why me? We should respond to suffering with a new set of responses. One, we should respond with confidence. Confidence that God knows 
plan knows, plans and directs our lives for the good. It's hard to calculate sometimes, but God always provides his love and strength for us. God leads us towards a better future. The second thing is perseverance. When, when facing grief, anger, sorrow and pain, we express our grief, but we don't give in to bitterness and despair. And thirdly, courage. Courage because with Jesus as our brother and saviour, we need not be afraid. He who suffered for us will not abandon us. Jesus carries us through everything. Jesus said to, the disciple, to his disciple Thomas, who came to believe after touching the resurrected Christ, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Peter, having heard these words, repeats them here. Though you have not seen him, you love him. That faith brings both salvation and the promise of a day when pain will end and perfect justice begin. Faith will be rewarded and evil will be punished. But what should we do until then? The Bible, Bible's answer is simple, but not easy. Because we know the future, we must faithfully serve God here and now. If today that means resolving a conflict, mending a hurt, working a dull job, confronting a belligerent child, rebuilding a marriage, or just waiting for guidance, do it all with the joy of God, who will return with his reward. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this blessed hope, the hope of salvation. It's a living hope that we have that one day, if we remain faithful to you, Lord, we will see you in heaven. God, we thank you, God, for your loving kindness. We thank you, God, for sending Jesus Christ as our Savior, as our brother, as our friend. We thank you for the presence and power of the Holy Spirit who guides us into all truth, Lord. God, we thank you for your words. We thank you, O oh God, that we have your words to live by. We pray, O oh God, that as we read and apply your words to our lives, Heavenly Father, that your words will come alive to us. Your words will bring peace and joy and happiness. Your words, Lord, will bring life to us, Jesus. God, we thank you, God, that you are our friend. You are our, our present help in times of trouble, in times of need, in God, in times of joy and peace. Every single moment we can call upon you, Lord. God, we just continue to thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you, God, for your healing power. We thank you, God, for the peace that passes all understanding that you have given. Lord, just help us to continue to trust you, to depend upon you, and to love you, Lord, with all our heart and all our mind. Thank you for what you are going to do for us. Thank you for hearing us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all, and you have a great day.